What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie to 988 coming at you live once again through the power of the internet. And uh, a lot of people have tweeted and talked to me about uh, the CEO of Abercrombie Fitch and the shitty things he's had to say recently. I created a Francis video raging at the guy, but I, I wanted to actually just talk about the topic for a minute. Many people asked me to do this, so I'm going to do that for you guys now. And I hope that you bear with me and stick it out and, and listen to my overall opinion, even though you may not agree with all of it. Now, for those of you who don't know, the CEO of Abercrombie Fitch came out and said that our clothes are not for everybody. They're for the cool kids. You remember the cool kids in high school? They had money. They were attractive. They were popular. They looked good. They were hit. You know, that's who our clothes are for. Our clothes are not for unattractive people. We don't even stock plus sizes in the store. We don't, we don't want unattractive or poor people buying our clothes. That's why they're expensive. And in fact, it turns out that these guys destroy up to $2 million worth of unsold clothes every year to keep them scarce, to keep them only in the hands of rich people. They don't put them on sale. They don't donate them to homeless charities. They just want to make sure that poor, unattractive people don't buy their clothes. And they try to create an atmosphere where only attractive people will want to shop there. In fact, the CEO goes as far as to say that they only hire attractive people so that only attractive people feel comfortable in the store. And there's some real flawed logic there, but, you know, because I'm going to tell you something, every strip club in America only hires attractive strippers, but there's some real ugly dudes in there. That's all, you know. But okay, all right. <clears throat> so... I respect this guy's opinion to an extent. Uh, I respect the right to that opinion. I disagree with it wholeheartedly. I think it's a really shitty opinion. But at the end of the day, this is capitalism. And you can target any demographic you want. You can say that our clothes are for rich kids. Our clothes are for popular kids. Our clothes are for skinny people. Um, our clothes are for fat people. Our clothes are for African Americans or Latinos. Uh, I, I, you can pretty much target any demographic you want and say these clothes are for these people and or this food or this item or whatever. But what you can't do in America and you shouldn't be able to do anywhere is to say that these clothes, this item, is not for this demographic. You can't say our country club is not for black people. You can't say that our country club is not for women. You can't say that our clothing line is not for average people or unattractive people or for poor people. Because when you do, you're being an asshole. <clears throat> I still respect the freedom of speech, though. I, I respect the freedom of capitalism. I respect that you should be allowed to do that. But the flip side of that coin is I should be allowed to call you an asshole for saying it and doing it. I get to choose whether or not I'm going to buy your product. I get to choose whether or not I'm going to participate in your douchebaggery. I get to decide whether or not I'm going to walk in your store. I get to decide whether or not I like or hate your brand or whether or not I take to the internet or and I complain about it loudly on YouTube or Reddit or Facebook. or I, I, I get to call you a douchebag. That's the flip side of the coin. So when you come out and you say our clothes are only for rich popular kids and it turns out that only a small fraction of the world is rich popular kids, but we all have a voice. We all have a voice through Facebook and Twitter and every other social media and Tumblr and YouTube and you name it. Expect for bad things to happen. That time and age is gone. You know, you can't say this stuff and get away with it anymore. And I'm watching this guy crash and burn in the media and it makes me really, really happy. Because, you know, there's some truth to the fact that when you are different, uh, you, maybe you're obese, maybe you're unattractive, Maybe you're a little weird. Maybe you're poor. Maybe you're different in one way or another. You get used to people treating you like crap. You get used to people treating you differently. And it hurts and it sucks. But it especially sucks when a CEO of a multi-fortune company that has a store in your hometown says you're not welcome there. Fuck you, dude. Um... At the end of the day, I'm not going to talk about thin privilege because it's bullshit. I'm not going to talk about attractive privilege because it's bullshit. At the end of the day, we almost always make our own privilege to an extent. There are some definite social um, stigmas and there's some definite things that you've got to fight through. But at the end of the day, unattractive people have become famous and rich and happy and powerful. Ugly people, weird people, men, women, African Americans, white, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You fight hard enough, you work hard enough, you'll get whatever you want. Except... Except a size 16 at Abercrombie and French 
well, Fitch, which is, by the way, I think 14 or 16 is the average size for a, an American female right now. So the average woman cannot purchase clothes at a store because the CEO doesn't like you. That's not freedom of speech. That's just being an asshole. And I, I'm all about freedom of speech. I'm always going to be uh, about freedom of speech. You're right to call me fat. I don't like it, but I'll die to defend it. I really, truly will. But, at, you know, at the end of the day, it still makes you a shithead. Just saying. <laughs>